connect from this. Give me a second to do a audio check for Twitch. Twitch always does that thing where it's it's like it says, oh no, you're alive five seconds ago. Oh wait, you're live now. Wait, no, you're not live yet. No, not yet. Not now, now you're live. We're not gonna tell you though. Okay. Okay, we're live. Uh, oh, I see we're live. Okay. Yeah, let me get that mouse pointer off the screen. That's gonna be that's awful. Yeah, it's definitely in the worst spot. <laughs> there, there we go. Now okay. it's good. <laughs> okay, two fifty. Okay. Yep. Uh, Audacity. Yep, I'm good. Okay, two fifty. Uh, let me change the scale on the recording. I guess it's okay. <clears throat> okay, three. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of Security here on the In Thirty Network. This is episode two hundred and fifty, and I think today we're going to talk about DNS. So let's first say hi to Tom, who is somewhere. Hi. Yeah, he's this way. Unless I'm mirrored, and then he's this way. But all right. So again, it's always been slow. The news is still like really, really slow. I do want to ask Tom: Did he see? Did he hear about the like the really bad Windows exploit that I get a whole bunch of messages like you have to upgrade now, or else like the government is going to reach out and upgrade for you? <laughs> I didn't understand it, so I don't have yeah, Windows devices. So. I I did hear about it. Um, it's. So I think the reason it got a bunch of news is that somebody in the government was reading their patch notes for Windows 10 at home. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah, this thing is actually pretty important. Everyone went crazy. Like, like, oh, it's September. We got to get this out. The update came out in August. Like, if you're just if you're regularly applying patches, it probably already happened. If you haven't updated Windows, go do that. Set up an automated schedule. Have it happen at like three in the morning. Just don't don't worry about it. Just let it do its thing. Um, but yeah, always keep yourself up to date, especially your operating system and your browsers. I mean Windows. I mean Windows updates on the second Tuesday of the month. So figure out that Wednesday or Thursday you'll get the hey ding it's time, ding 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 it's time to update and like do it i mean if you're on a solid state drive i think my computer uh shuts down and boots up my like 300 dollars lenovo work laptop in i don't know 20 30 seconds yeah it's quick. so it can do so it, it's really fast uh and yeah you have tabs open i get it i get it restarting is a royal pain in the neck but it's one of those you got to do it like once a month so do it and I've got I've got all my browsers set to save my tabs on every system, so I can just close the browser, bring it back up, and everything's there. And like if I'm in the middle of something, because my Windows machine is my primary gaming device, and we all know you don't want to be bugged while you're in the middle of a match. So I just click that that little pop up in the task in the taskbar in the system tree there, and say, "Yeah, take care of this at like 2 a.m." And it doesn't bother me. It just it says, "Cool." I finish gaming, I go to bed sometime in the middle of the night, the thing updates, and that's it. That's that's literally the amount of pain I go through to update my Windows system. It's just simple. I mean, for me, I'm on a Mac, and it's always really annoying that I come upstairs the next day, and I tell it to automatically update, and it doesn't actually restart. Like, so it's one of, so I've had it, like the new operating system comes out, whatever the point release is, it will shut down, but when it turns on, it has to do some sort of updating and it never does it. And so if I have a meeting in 10 minutes, uh, I can just be sitting there and I'm stuck. Uh, I don't know if that's me or that's OS 10. I, I don't know, but it's just one of those. It's one of those gripes, but you deal with it. And yes, my system is encrypted. So maybe it needs to de-encrypt to do that. And but anyway, so yeah, if you have your Windows machine, keep it updated. Again, we're more at home now, so it's now it's on your home network. Um, if iOS 14 just came out, we'll give you that heads up. If you want to download that, install it. I haven't had really, I download on my iPad. I didn't really have any problems. Usually, usually the, the point zero releases are a little buggy. Android 11 came out. And I mean, I'm having I'm having more and more problems with Android as the days go by. Uh, 
One of the big bugs I saw, and obviously you haven't had it, is so like Google Maps just sometimes just doesn't work. So you say navigate somewhere and it can't find you. And I thought it was just me. Like, turns out, no, it's it's like a really big bug that they can't find you and you have to restart your phone to get it to work. So imagine you're drive, you're coming out of the rest stop and you're like, okay, I want to go back to wherever. And now you have to restart your phone. It's a big thing. So, so I saw bugs like that when running Cyanogen uh, on one of my Nexus devices where the GPS would like literally the hardware would just lock up and fail to work and it would take a reboot. And I have rebooted my phone in the car while driving before. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, like I stopped installing my own ROMs on Android purely because of bugs like that. And now if it's in the official Google images, that's a pretty big deal. I mean, I had it and I said, oh, this, that, the other thing. I just sent you the thread. Uh, but it's just, it's one of those, it's one of those, okay, it's, I get, this is the polish that needs to work. And so... Like, like I, I've told Tom, I'm going to move to uh, the iPhone, I'm assuming, in a few weeks, as long as they're still putting out a phone. Like, it's not some, like, brain-implemented chip. Like, like who knows? They take out – it's like no screen, no buttons type thing. I, I plan on getting the next iPhone um, unless, obviously, something major happens because I, I think it's time I, – I want things to work better. And we actually had this good discussion in the WhatsApp group. So you join the WhatsApp group. What devices are you running? Which I think should be an episode for another show. But I want to get to our main topic, DNS, today. So we haven't spoken about DNS in a long – I probably – I know we've spoken about DNS. I don't think we've spoken about DNS in a few years. Usually the running joke is it's never DNS until it's DNS. But it's it's one of these internet protocols that just magically works. And then when there's a problem, it ends up being this really mysterious problem that you just don't understand why it's breaking. But DNS has come a long way in the last like three or four years. So I'm going to have Tom come up and we're going to explain all the DNS stuff. So DNS is the, and I, I'm sorry, I apologize in advance. I'm actually contractually obligated to say this as a tech person. DNS is the address book of the internet or the internet phone book. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, DNS is really a way to turn domain names or like stuff that you put in your browser's URL bar, like google.com, facebook.com, whatever, uh, in 30, you know, stuff like that. Um, so it's a way that computers can translate human readable words, domain names, uh, into IP addresses or how computers actually identify themselves as part of a network. I mean, that's it. You, you named yeah, it. We're that's, done. That's it. That's, that's, it. that's all that's, it does. That's the show. Thank you. Thank you all for showing up. Uh, we're a little bit under time, but uh, I guess we can go into a little bit more detail. Um, so how DNS usually works is that if let's say you've got a completely fresh system, you've you know done nothing on the network. Um, let's say let's say you're coming at this without any network cache whatsoever, like even at your your router. Um, you type in Google.com, your computer says, "Ah, uh, what was that one? I I don't actually have that one. Like it looks in its local cache because it keeps like recent DNS answers in its cache, so it's faster next time. Because uh, IP addresses don't change." all that often depending on what you're doing yes network techs are going to yell at me about sharded deployments other stuff like that don't worry about it we're going to keep this simple um so your computer will like scribble down and say okay google.com is over here um so if your computer doesn't have that lookup it asks the next device it says hey router uh like your local home wi-fi router do you know what Google.com is? And if your router has looked it up recently, it'll also have that 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 cache table. If it doesn't, it's going to go out to the ISP and say, or or whatever DNS server you have configured um, on those devices, and it'll say, "Hey, I got this thing, Google.com. Do you know where this is?" And DNS will, you know, the the DNS server you have configured will look it up and it'll go, "Oh yeah, it's right here," and it'll hand you back that IP address cool, you're looking for this record for google.com, here's the IP address, and then everybody writes it down, they've all got it in their cache, and next time you go to google.com, Google it looks it up in the cache, which is way faster than doing a network request, and it says, cool, we're right here. 
It makes a connection to that IP address. It displays a page on your browser. I am simplifying a lot of this. It's actually pretty technical and really neat. Um, but at a high level, that's basically how DNS works. You ask for Google.com, you get Google.com's IP address. Oh, so, so yeah, th you said that it gets the IP address, but now we have to get into little, we have to get into deeper things like HTTPS now requires the DNS entry lookup, but, but that's the next step. But yeah, like you said, it, it's the phone book and if it goes out and, and so nobody thinks really anything of it, you plug in your computer to your router and things just work. And so, and then you hear things like DNS spoofing. I don't know if we want to get into that yet or other weird little problems. Like you go somewhere and it's not what you were looking for or you, or now you're hearing CBS news at 10. They're tracking you by what your internet's typing and you find out it's a DNS. They're sending DNS requests and everything else. And then it's how come things are slow and some, uh, some crazy person on the internet's like change your DNS provider to this one. And they give you the steps to change it. And then it really breaks a lot of things. So, so well, it's not really a hard idea to understand that it's just looking up things. And obviously, faster is better. But it, it, it gets a lot of press lately. Like, there's a lot of press for something that does something so simple. Yeah. So, I, a funny story. A lot of ISP outages aren't actually full network outages. Most of the ISP outages I've seen and experienced personally have been DNS related, which is really unfortunate because DNS is one of those pretty well understood technologies at this point. It's been around basically for literally a phone book. Like if you've all used a phone book, that's what it is. How can you yeah. change? I mean, unless your kids don't know what a phone book is, I mean, how can you change it at this point? So, um, and we'll, we'll get into yeah. how this is changing. Um, so like a lot of ISP outages will be the ISP's DNS server. So when your router says, hey, uh, ISP DNS server, what's Google.com? If that server is down, if it's overloaded, if it's slow, it can really impact your browsing. It can impact that, that first ask where the first request of where is Google.com never gets completed, never comes back to you. Your computer eventually, it, the request times out, it gives up and it goes, I don't know, man, no one can find it. Google.com is just gone, man. I don't, I don't know what this means. And that's not really the case. Like if you were to type in that IP address by hand into your browser, bam, it's coming up right away. But if you can't complete the DNS request, a whole lot of stuff starts to break down, uh, which is why you see people on the internet saying, hey, use 1.1.1.1 or 8.8.8.8 for your DNS server, which is Cloudflare DNS and Google DNS respectively, uh, because their infrastructure tends to be... Um, a bit more reliable uh, than your average ISP, depending on who you have. Um, so uh, personally, I've used everything. I've used OpenDNS, I've used Cloudflare's, I've used Google's. Um, I, it basically, anything except ISP DNS is going to be a little bit faster, depending so on So what are you currently using? To. Right now, I'm on OpenDNS with a fallback to Cloudflare. Okay, I think I'm on uh, uh, one dot... I think I'm on one either Cloudflare's or Quad Nine Nine dot Nine dot Nine dot Nine. Yeah, with the fallback, I think to to open DNS. Okay, and this is another thing to bring up: backup DNS servers. So you don't have to have just one of these guys. You don't have to say, "Oh, I'm just using this one," or "I'm just using this DNS server over here." I have four configured. I've got two from Open DNS and two from Cloudflare, and yeah, so what happens in, in a lot of systems, it depends on how you configure your network topology. I've configured mine to ask all of these servers simultaneously. Basically, when I type google.com into my browser and nothing's in the cache and I hit enter, it blasts out four requests to these four different servers. And the one that gets back to me first, that's the one I'm using. I literally start a, a DNS request race amongst all these different servers. And the first one that gets back to me is the first one I'm using because man, fast is good. Um, and most systems are designed to operate that way. Um, your ISP usually has two or more DNS servers for uh, systems to use, which is automatically configured through um, you know, DHCP or other technologies to assign an IP address to your router, but that's getting into the weeds and we can discuss that some other time. Um, but uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that DNS is a cool, fun technology, um, 
but unfortunately, it can be unreliable. I mean, I had a problem, and I think I told you this. I was going to your site on D- on a DNS provider 9.9.9.9, and it wasn't loading. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm doing it on my phone. And my phone was on LTE, and it was loading. Like, Tom, what's going on? I still don't know, but I changed the DNS to open DNS and it magically worked. I don't know what's happening. And it's really hard to troubleshoot some stupid problem like this with people where you think it's working and then you find out that somebody told them to change your DNS and it's blocking things or it's doing some sort of weird security thing. And you're just like, what's, what is going on here for something that should just work? So it's, it's, it's one of those. Um, I, I don't know. Are we ready to talk into, uh, to go into the privacy implications yet? Almost. Um, cause you brought okay. up a really good point blocking things. So I, a lot of the times when an ISP decides to block something, um, and, and this has happened for a wide variety of reasons and a wide variety of places, you know, both good reasons and bad. Um, but if something is blocked in an ISP, the easiest way to do it is just remove it from the phone book. Just take that that Sharpie and mark out the line. Uh, and so like, if you're looking for Google.com and somebody wanted to blacklist Google.com, they just remove it from the ISP's DNS servers. They just say, nope, this is gone. So any request where you ask your ISP's DNS server, hey, what's Google.com? It's gonna reply back, I don't know. Um, and effectively for the vast majority of non-technical consumers, which is just about everyone, um, they won't know it'll look like the site is just gone or down or not available and in reality it's really just you know whoever runs that dns server decided to not put it in there or to remove it for some reason i i actually have seen um there's a i'm i apologize thoroughly because i completely forget the details i just have the image seared into my my head um where there was a country under protest and the government decided to ban a bunch of stuff, Facebook, Google, Twitter, you name it. They just blanket banned everything to keep people from organizing. And someone, some helpful protester decided to, uh, to graffiti DNS colon eight, 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 eight on a wall somewhere to get people unblocked because eight, eight, that was eight, Egypt. Eight, eight, during, eight. That was Egypt during the Arab spring. Cause I know that picture. that's the one, that's the one. Yes. Yeah. And it, it worked perfectly well because the ISPs weren't actually doing IP level blocking. They were literally just removing DNS entries because the government told them to. And 8.8.8.8 is run by Google, and they, at least so far, haven't played those games. So by people changing their DNS to Google's DNS, the internet was open and free to them again. Uh, it's really, really cool. The, the internet and a lot of its technologies some are badly designed, but the majority of them are designed to transparently handle or at least be able to mitigate network outages like this because the the founders of the internet understood that these are physical devices in the real world and stuff breaks. Um, I, I think everybody who's worked in technology uh, on, on the networking side has encountered the phone call where you pick up the phone. It's like, yeah, this is your ISP. Some guy drove a backhoe through the wrong part of town and tore up a bunch of fiber it'll be fixed in a few hours, but sorry, it's broken right now. <laughs> it's, it's a terrible situation to be in, especially if you're the person driving the backhoe. Um, but yeah, DNS also has some interesting privacy implications because it isn't, it's not private really at all. Uh, well, and, and now we're seeing, can, can people track you via the DNS? And I, and I think, Somebody, uh, op- not Optimum, uh, Comcast said, we're going to hold to our commitment to not track you through DNS. And people are like, wait, what? You were doing that? <laughs> like, or you weren't doing that? And and they're like, no, we're not doing it. But yes, we, 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 we are. <laughs> and so, I, I do remember that. DNS requests, when they come to these servers, right, you can see, oh, hey, look. Yeah, it looks like Tom's looking up Google.com. Mm, okay. That's interesting. They can't see like what I'm doing on Google.com thanks to HTTPS, but they can sure see my DNS request saying, hey, can I get Google.com? Oh, wait. Oh, he's going, he's going to that place that sells like camping equipment. 
Oh, that's interesting. Mm, he's probably he's probably about to take a camping trip. Oh, look at that. He went to like camping review sites. I bet he's going to buy a tent. Yeah. We should show him ads because he's probably going to buy a tent. And you can actually look at the DNS requests where they're coming from and use that on a per IP basis to track and sell ads against it in the best case. In the worst case, it's active surveillance. Um, so we've like technologists have been mulling over and trying to figure out a way to make DNS more private because DNS is a UDP connection. It's straight up unencrypted. It literally shows, you know, this IP asked for the address for this domain name and anyone in that chain could intercept and analyze those packets. And it's just not a security conscious design. Uh, with a lot of these uh, foundational internet technologies, while they are really well built sometimes, unfortunately, something that we keep seeing over and over again is that they weren't built with security in mind because literally they were just trying to get the thing working. Uh, and this happens a lot to programmers even today where you're not concerned about security, you're just happy that the thing compiles and oh, it runs, it runs and there are no obvious bugs. This is amazing. Ship it, push it out the door. It's done. We have did it. It's perfect. Not, not all the time. Uh, and TNS is one of those technologies where, yeah, it's got a whole lot of benefits and it's scaled really, really well, but it's not secure because it wasn't designed that way. It wasn't built with security in mind because frankly, that wasn't a concern back in the day. And so, so some of these companies are saying, you know what, can we make a secure model of DNS? And, and we're starting to see some of that. But the problem is, like you said, somebody has to manually change these things. And like you said, uh, Google 8.8.8.8, it's not easy to do. I mean, it's not hard to change your DNS. But if you don't know what you're doing, you're setting, it, it, they give you all these weird names. And so you have to change it. And then something goes wrong. And I keep on going back to when something goes wrong. It's one of those things that's hard to find. Now, I know we talked about speed on the DNS. Uh, to be honest with you, and I know we're different because we're always different, using your ISP's DNS actually is not the worst idea. Um, it's it's If you're okay with Comcast and, and Optimum doing that, it's probably not, a, it's not something that you really want to change. I use, I think I looked at it, 1.1.1.1, and then I fall back to Cloudflare, uh, or no, to open DNS, because you know what? I don't want Fios knowing what I'm doing. Because like you said, they are sort of tracking you. I did Google DNS 8.8.8.8, but and they claim they're not tracking you, but I just I, I feel icky. I, I I we talked about getting off of Google on certain things. I don't necessarily want to track it. Uh then you have Cloudflares and Open DNS. Open DNS has some pretty cool whitelist settings that you can do in parental controls. And I said, I don't even need that. I just want what we're gonna talk about next. Uh secure the DNS. I don't want Verizon or uh or my ISP knowing where I'm going to. So what can I do to change that? And you know what? I'll sacrifice a little speed, but I really don't want to sacrifice that much because things are already slow as it is. Yeah. So there's, um, let me just get this one out of the way. DNSSEC is a way to add in basically cryptographic signatures into DNS requests and responses, or, or really responses, um, to prove that the responses themselves are valid. Um, and it hasn't really taken off and there's a bunch of issues with it. And frankly, it doesn't work on the internet at scale. So it's kind of a failed experiment. Interesting for sure, but not, not something we're going to see anytime soon without some major rework. The reason that you want to make sure your DNS is, is valid is because there's a thing that is called DNS poisoning or DNS spoofing, which I have personally used a lot of for very valid applications. But just like anything in technology, it can be easily used and uh, abused um, by nefarious actors. So for me, it was quite literally, I needed these requests to like to a certain device going through my local computer running the software stack so I could analyze it and debug some stuff that was happening. So what I did is I set up my router, um, I set up my own little DNS server with the Raspberry Pi, and I said, hey, um, the Raspberry Pi is now the DNS server. When you see a request come in for this thing, point it to my computer. And it's cool because then that device on the other side of the Raspberry Pi would literally just 
talk to my computer instead of the, the main server that it was supposed to talk to so I could do some local debugging. It's really cool. It's super helpful. And it does allow you to do some cool things like tricking devices into talking to other devices to do good work. But just like everything, that could easily be abused. Like imagine if you're trying to go to google.com, there's something in the middle. You've got a man in the middle attack going on. They're spoofing DNS. And somebody's like, oh, google.com? Yeah, that, that's it's totally over here. No, it's not that guy. It's not back here. It's over It's over this way. Uh, yeah, just, just feed all your Google requests over here. Um, and like if Google wasn't using HTTPS, if, they, if there wasn't any kind of TLS validation going on, that person in the middle could literally just ship your traffic somewhere else and you wouldn't know because the address bar still says google.com uh, now tls https have really um helped shore up this problem because when your computer connects it's going to go hey uh yeah google told me to pin their certificate here this one matches right and the man in the middle is like uh no nah, it doesn't your browser throws up the big red flag and it, it shuts everything down um but if it's unencrypted, yeah, they can they can send all your traffic to somewhere else or at least point you to the wrong destination. Um, so we have things like DNS over TLS, which is less common today, but it's quite literally what it sounds like. You create a TLS tunnel, ship your DNS traffic through it, comes back, everything in that tunnel is encrypted, you're done. There's also DNS over HTTPS, which is quite literally the exact same thing, but instead of just a TLS wrapper, it's HTTP traffic wrapped in a TLS wrapper. And inside that HTTP traffic, that's where your DNS requests go. It's kind of nice because it's already built into the vast majority of modern browsers. Like just about everything does DNS over HTTPS today. So you get the encryption, you get the, the easy stateful stuff because it's HTTP and you get pretty fast DNS requests because, hey, browsers and networks are pretty fast today as long as you're not loading up 70 gigs of JavaScript. Um, the, the downside of this, and, and Firefox did partner with Cloudflare um, to be their DNS over HTTPS provider, is that you don't have to worry about how your DNS is configured. The browser comes with it built in. It says, we're going over here to ask these people where the websites are. It is more privacy conscious to a certain extent, because instead of being able to, um, instead of the default, being able to freely pick and choose whatever DNS server you have configured on your machine or use the ones you have configured on your machine, it's now literally sending all your requests to someone else. In this case, it's Cloudflare, right? Like imagine if they partnered with Google, then all of your DNS requests are going to Google by default, whether you wanted to or not, if you don't configure the alternatives, like you can turn this off, you can go back to classic mode. There's nothing stopping you there, but by default, all your traffic goes to one other place and hopefully they're privacy conscious and not snarfing your traffic or watching stuff just because it's wrapped in HTTPS doesn't mean that the person on the other side can't read it, right? It's a point to point tunnel. You know what you sent and the person on the other side knows what you sent. No one in the middle does, but you really have to be careful because if Cloudflare turns evil, they've got all of our DNS requests. So with that said, yeah, so we were thinking about that. Uh, so Cloudflare as a company has constantly put out different transparency reports and has been audited and does all this. By the way, Cloudflare runs a third of the internet. So if you're going to a website, they're, you, they're most a big website. They're, you're, they're probably using Cloudflare services. So if they lost our trust, uh, they would basically go bankrupt at this point because people would, would all the big companies would leave them. And especially if they said, hey, uh, we have this software. Oh, but you're, we say no logging. Oh, we're going to log. Yeah, that, that's going to be a big problem for them. So, so I, like I said, I tend to use Cloudflare. They have some weird, they have some new nifty features. They have their warp speed, which is some weird proxy VPN that lets me get on at school, which I like. Uh, they have DNSSEC also or D they have some sort of secure DNS that, that works there. So I guess in the last two minutes, I don't know, do you want to recommend people looking at alternative DNSs? Do we want to tell them that this is what they should look for? Or you know what, if you're happy, stay happy. If you're not happy, uh, 
going to the so, settings yeah just just to to do it right just so you get familiar with it check out configuring dns servers for your particular operating system like look through the settings like it's usually in network settings just so you know where it is if something goes wrong and maybe maybe take a sticky note and write down some numbers right like go to open dns right they've got the, the dns servers listed it's on the, the bottom, bottom by the way it's the very very bottom yeah. it's hard to find it's at the very very bottom i just want you to know that it's literally in the footer i don't know why they hide this instead of putting it up front and center but um yeah like write it on a sticky note so if, if stuff goes weird if stuff starts breaking like in your own isp dns write it down and like uh, put that training to use like uh, flip those things change it and call the day um if you are totally fine with the way things work if you're okay with cloudflare if you're okay with dns over https don't change a thing it, it would work perfectly fine if it works today it's going to work tomorrow just know that like dns over tls or dns over https you are trusting a single entity with your dns request but honestly it's not really any different than what you're doing today with just straight up dns uh the the big difference is that uh, the endpoint sees your DNS requests as well as uh, anyone in the middle who might be sitting there analyzing the traffic. Um, so DNS over a secured tunnel of some sort is going to be better than just plain old DNS. Um, so uh, other other ones we can recommend 1.1.1.1. So that's Cloudflare's. Uh, Google has got 8.8.8.8. And it's not just those. Like they usually come in pairs. So OpenDNS has got two public ones. Google's got two publics. Cloudflare's got two publics. I think even Oracle has something. Well, don't use um, the Oracle one. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest using the Oracle one. Um, never use the Oracle one. That's never <laughs> the option. That's, that's good advice for any technologist out there. Just don't use the Oracle one. Um, but yeah, like keep it written down somewhere in a text file, like somewhere like buried in, in your, your hard drive. Um, and yeah, so there's quad nine, nine dot nine dot nine dot nine. That's in partner with IBM. Okay. Which I, I, I feel like that's a good uh, thing to use. Eight, like we said, eight dot eight dot eight dot eight open DNS is at the bottom of their website. Um, I would stick, I mean. Google's is fine. Your ISP is fine. When when somebody says use this DNS, apparently PS4 people like changing their DNS. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend that. Um, a, a lot of devices do come with like the manufacturer's DNS servers built in because um, they want to keep everything in their in their ecosystem. Uh, if it works fine if something starts to have trouble do not be afraid to change these things it's not like you can't go back like if you want to go back just like it literally like the option says automatically determine and it'll figure itself out it's computers and networks are really good at just figuring itself out um so if you change it don't be afraid of it you're not gonna break anything if it does break toggle that back off it's perfectly fine uh, and you can even do this at the router level. I know people that use OpenDNS for like family safe internet browser filtering stuff. It's not perfect, but it's a thing. Uh, and they set it at the router level. So anything on Wi-Fi just inherits OpenDNS's uh, DNS servers and the, the block list that you've personally set up for that network. You told me this before. If you can do something on the router level, anything, it is much better than doing on the individual level. And that's yes. so, so yeah, I, I would, I would change the DNS on the router level and go there. Now, if you're asking, how do you actually do it? Find us in the WhatsApp group. We will tell you, this is how, this is our ad for that. Get into the WhatsApp group. We will tell you how to do it. It's not hard, but it's just one of those, a nice screenshot would be really helpful. Uh, and, and we'll leave you with that something to play around with you want to try something else try it uh just write down your old dns number just in case so you don't mess anything up and and i i don't think this is one of those things you're really going to mess up but if something happens always remember that sometimes it actually is dns so. and um if you want to learn about dns moving talk to me in the whatsapp group i've done some cool stuff with it so uh, we're over so we're going to end now and we will hopefully see you next week so, bye everyone. Bye. 250.
while you were talking.